everyday English listening. Topic one: baking cake pops. So, Meg, I hear that you're quite the baker. You like、yeah. to bake brownies, cookies, things like that. Yeah, I love to bake. It's pretty relaxing for me and kind of fun,、uh, kind of a creative outlet. Baking. Well, everybody notices it in the office when we see you bring in brownies for your students, and we're all jealous. We wish we were in your class. So, what, what's what's it with baking? Like, is it just something you do to、mm. relax? Um. Yeah. Well, personally, I love sweets. Like, I'm.、Um, Would eat only sweets if my body could handle it,、right. but I try to eat regular food too. So I think I inherited that from my mom. But so because I love sweets so much, it ends up being really fun making something、uh, like brownies or cookies.、Um, and for the creative outlet aspect,、um, I love to make cupcakes or cakes. And I don't know if you've heard of cake pops. And no, what's a、them. what's a cake pop? A cake pop is like a little piece of cake on a stick coated in chocolate. Oh really? That、yeah. sounds pretty good. So in America right now, they're getting pretty popular. There's some people are saying it's the new cupcake. So I don't know if you know. A few years back, cupcakes got pretty popular, and so now we have cake pops.、Um, and I was in the process of starting a little cake pop business before I moved to Japan. So、um, it's really fun because you can make the cake pops, and it takes a while, but then you can decorate them in all these really creative ways for different holidays or parties or birthday or just. Cute things, so、um, yeah. So the creativity plus something sweet makes it fun for me. That's awesome. But what cake pop is it? Like a corn dog, but like a cake? <laughs> no, it's just like a little round piece of cake. So the process is you should bake a cake like normal, yeah, and then sift it up so it's just tiny little crumbs. So ruin the cake that you've made, sift it up till it's just crumbs, and then mix in just a little bit of like cream cheese. Frosting,、uh-huh. and it makes kind of a dough, a formable, moldable dough.、Uh-huh. And then、uh, you mold balls, put it on a stick, dip it in chocolate, and then you can decorate it. So it, it can be chocolate or like a vanilla colored type. You know, you can have different colors. Things wow! Like that,、so. Cake pops. Yeah, yeah. So cake pops are probably my favorite thing to make, but also decorating cakes. I took a couple of cake decorating classes、um, and making. Frosting and you know using the special frosting tools to swirl it on、yeah. cupcakes or whatever. So,、um, so、yeah. have you ever made uh, uh, like a wedding cake or anything like that?、Mm, I did actually make one wedding cake. I never really wanted to make wedding cakes because they're very complicated and there's so much pressure for it to be extremely perfect because it's someone's wedding. Yeah. And so, but there was、uh, a couple that I knew who were just doing really like. Low budget, cute wedding, and they weren't too concerned about it being a huge cake. They just needed something smaller, and so I did a couple of tiers, and it was actually a chocolate cake, so it wasn't even white. But so I did one chocolate cake, but I've done cake pops for a few weddings as like favors for the guests. Wow, the cake pops are just the、mm. thing. Yeah, cake because they come out so cute. I actually have a cake pop set that I can make where it looks like a little bride and a little groom, <laughs> like a little、okay. tuxedo, and so、yeah. those are probably my most. Popular ones for weddings,、um, and I also before cake pops, I was making truffles. So that's another thing that you can also decorate in a cute way. Wow. Well, we'll actually, we'll talk about that more in the next interview. I'd like、mm. to ask you some questions about truffles. Sure. Topic two: Truffle time. Okay, so Meg, we're talking about baking, and in the last one, in the last interview, you mentioned cake pops and some other stuff. Now, you also mentioned truffles.、Mm. What what is a truffle? A truffle is、um, it's a little chocolate candy, or it can be not so tiny, but it's not huge. It's like bite size, bite size chocolate candy with something in the inside that's called ganache, which is、uh, can be a chocolate or a different flavor. Kind of creamy or a little more firm, and then coated in chocolate. So it's a chocolate candy, basically. Okay.、Uh, Now I sometimes hear the word truffles like something that pigs find under、mm, trees. Is yeah, it the same word? Yeah. No. Well, same word, same word. But those are a type of mushroom, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So there's truffles mushroom, and then there's truffles chocolate candy. So I guess be careful which one you're ordering if you're at the <laughs> store. <laughs> right. They have nothing to do with each other. No. I, I mean, maybe someone has made a mushroom. Chocolate truffle before、right. I'm not sure, but not me. <laughs> okay, so are truffles easy to make? Ah,、uh, they are. 
they're time consuming. So I don't think they're difficult to make, but you have to have the time to put in because you need to make the inside chocolate part first and mix together the ingredients and then form, I always did it by hand, form all the little balls uh, so that you can dip them in chocolate. And so one batch I could usually get maybe 60 truffles. So probably I had to spend a few hours working on a batch of truffles. Wow. Can you go through the process? Like how do you make them from start to finish? Mm. So probably my favorite ones are like an espresso chocolate kind where um, you would, I need some chopped up chocolate, more like baking chocolate or really dark chocolate, or if you want milk chocolate, you can use it. And then uh, mix that with some heavy cream and butter on the stove. And uh, if there's any flavor you're going to add. And so if it's so like a coffee flavor, you can add some coffee grinds and later strain them out. So it has that flavor. And, and then, that's the, the inner part that right, you're making. That's yeah. like, what's that called again? Ganache. Ganache. Mm. Okay. And so um, then you, you've made that, and so it's still pretty thin, more liquidy. And so you need to put it in the fridge to let it firm up for, it can take, that recipe can take a few hours before it's ready. And then once it's ready, I just use like a small spoon to scoop a little out and then use my hands to roll it into like a ball shape and then uh, let that sit. And I might have to put it back in a fridge because your hands kind of warm the chocolate back up. And then once it's out, you can use a special dipping fork or just a regular small fork and have some melted coating chocolate that you can get at craft stores or there's fancy kinds or cheap kinds or whatever. And then you need to dip each ball individually and put it down on wax paper, like a special paper that it won't stick to. And then you let them, if you're going to add anything on top, like sprinkles or anything, you can do that. Then, and then that's it, you're done. Wow, and then you just put them in the fridge, you chill them, right? Uh, you don't have to, they're better actually if you keep them out of the fridge, because if you put them in the fridge, then you maybe have to handle issues with it going from cold to warm, and chocolate, you might not know chocolate, if it gets too cold sometimes or like frozen little white spots can come to the surface and so oh. it kind of ruins the the prettiness of the chocolate so okay. yeah so you can just leave them out that's good to know mm, yeah oh, thanks well i might give it a try but it still sounds pretty <laughs> well hard. i'll help you <laughs> topic three ocean encounters so, Sadi, talking about ocean sports and being on the ocean, maybe you could talk about your ocean swimming experience in Ogasawara. Yeah, I love swimming, you know. It's so peaceful to be there in the ocean. And, um, and the, o the ocean in Ogasawara was very clear and you could see so many fishes and I'd love to go swimming and, and be immersed in the ocean. It was like another world. It was very beautiful, but there was one time. Oh, that time. What 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 happened? Um my friends had come to visit and so we went to we went fishing, but we, before they started fishing, I decided to go for a swim. And I I swam and I could see all the way to the bottom of the ocean. And I see this fish, but they're actually not fish, they were sharks. There were white tip sharks. Wow. There were four of them at the bottom of the ocean. And I just remember, in, you know, that one thing you have to do is to keep calm. So I did that. I swam out. I told my friends, there are four sharks down there. So get me out of here. So they got me out of there. But my heart was beating so fast. I was so scared. Were they dangerous, those sharks? Well... They're um they're not dangerous. They might be able to to like bite a finger off, but I didn't want that to happen either. So I as soon as I saw them, I came out of the place. Yeah, but that was so scary. Wow. Ogasawara sounds beautiful and amazing and dangerous all at the same time. That's right. So Mark, uh what about you? Do you have any encounters with fish? With fish? Well, I remember that fish in... Don't you remember when we saw it together? We were swimming in that beach called Cominato and we swam out around that those rocks where we always went 
and we're looking we had our snorkels on it's all peaceful and pretty and like just tranquil and we're looking at all the fish and then suddenly that freaky fish like started staring at us do you remember that yeah with huge eyes huge eyes, and then it started coming towards us that's right so in the middle of the ocean we decided okay let's just split we, and, split, you know, we were swimming away from it and it was swimming after us, this little fish. Like It was it was very small. It was like 30 centimetres long, but it looked really scary. Yeah, we were quite far out from the from the beach and we did split up, didn't we? And like, then what happened? I went that way and you went that way and <laughs> guess which way it went? My way. <laughs> and, and it ch- chased you all the way into the sea, into the right. beach. So I was, I was swimming really quickly and trying to get out of the beach and it was very close to me and I thought it would bite my 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 toes but it didn't do anything but I can't forget that time that a small fish got me out of the ocean it was so weird wasn't it like fish don't do that <laughs> they know. don't and it was the only fish like there were no other fish around mm, strange mysterious Topic four, more freaks. Okay, Julia, we're talking about types of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have some more that we can discuss. So the next one is worrywort. Are you a worrywort? I guess when it comes to some things, maybe, yeah. Like sometimes I get insomnia and I know it's because my brain is worrying about stuff. Right, you just can't let it go. Yeah, which is kind of why I took up yoga, meditation, because uh, just calming down those you know those thoughts that are just going crazy around in your head Mm -hmm. so i i would be a worry what if it wasn't for my yoga practice i think the yoga helps me keep my mind calm oh cool but i have that natural tendency i think okay so what about things around the house are you a clean freak (laughs) no (laughs) (laughs) No, I am uh, messy, like ridiculously messy. I don't see mess. I don't see it. It's like a blind spot. So you're a slob. Yeah, (laughs) kind (laughs) of, yeah. And and this is the one thing that drives my husband crazy because he's very tidy. He's very clean, very neat. Ah, so you guys are yin and yang. Yeah, he likes things to go in the proper place and he likes things to be tidied up, put away. And for him, it's very sort of a therapeutic thing. It's... I guess the mirror of his mental state, if there's a mess going on, he feels uneasy. So he needs to tidy up in order to kind of be focused and calm. I'm kind of the opposite. If, if everything's too tidy and neat, I get a bit freaked out. Right. I like, I'm like. i comfortable in mess. <laughs> Very good. comfortable in mess. Comfortable in chaos. Yeah. Well, uh, that leads us to the next one. Maybe this relates to your husband. Mm -hmm. Is he a control freak? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) He is, yes. So can you explain what a control freak is? Control freak is someone who likes to be in control, has to be in control all the time of all things. (laughs) (laughs) And if there's not, if there's disorder or something's left. It it causes him stress. It causes him stress. So just simple things like maybe like a house guest. While he's a very friendly and generous and warm person, having an extra person in the house makes him uneasy because it's a, a factor that he's out, that's out of his control. Mm, yeah. So how about uh, other things like, uh, are you a, like a video game junkie or a TV junkie? Um, there are certain games that I have to take off my phone because... They will eat away my time. Right, like, like Angry Birds and stuff. Stuff like that. The, the ones that the just really simplistic ones, things like Tetris and putting squares in boxes right. and, and, and Bejeweled where you change, you know, moving things around. Those kind of games I can get very readily addicted to. So I, I, have, to, I have to be careful. I, I had um, I had like a brief intense fling with Tekken, the like fighting games. I was oh. really into fight fighting games and playing. Wow, yeah. that's hardcore. Yeah, but it was short lived, <laughs> and I I felt it was like an unhealthy obsession that I had. 
Yeah, yeah. You can just yeah. <clears throat> but it was it. yeah, it was great. I mean, I enjoyed it when I did it. It was uh, fun. Topic five: Freaks and animals. So, Julia, uh, let's talk about types of people. Okay. All right. First one: Are you a fitness freak? A fitness freak? Huh. I'm fairly fit, but I'm not a freak. No, I'm not a fitness freak. No. No. So you exercise, but it's not like you do it all the time. No, and I do some un- unhealthy stuff as well. I like to drink, and I'm a former smoker, and. Yeah, no, I'm not a fitness freak. <laughs> right, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, a fitness freak is like somebody who does it, who exercises compulsively. I indulge in bad stuff too, so no, I'm not a fitness freak. Okay, so that leads us to the next question. Mm-hmm. Are you a party animal? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, too old now. <laughs> but when you were younger, you were a party think, animal. Uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably the type that I most, uh, most Fit, fit it into. Oh, nice. I was never a party animal. No. No, I've always been pretty, pretty uh, tame. I've always been pretty tame. Yeah, I was pretty wild when really? I was younger. Yeah, yeah. So you used to drink, smoke, stay yeah, up late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that and more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come home in the wee hours of the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. Okay, uh, next one would be, um, do you know anybody in your family who's a couch potato? Couch potato. Because I know that you're not a couch potato. I'm not a couch potato, no. My brother sometimes demonstrates couch potato traits. He likes to play video games and stuff like that, and he'll spend a lot of time watching movies, and so he does spend a lot of time sedentary. Compared to me, he makes me look like a fitness freak, I guess, because he doesn't do so much exercise. <laughs> right. And so for people listening, the couch potato is somebody who watches a lot of TV and sits on the couch. I spends a lot. a lot of time on the couch, yeah. Um, well, how about the similar personality trait of the bookworm? Are you a bookworm? A bookworm. No, but I think my husband's probably a bookworm. Yeah. So he spends a lot of time reading books. He reads very fast, so he gets through a lot of Ooh, books. He's a speed reader. Can't, yeah, he's just a, he's a very fast reader, and he has to read all. He has to have a book with him all the time. He cannot a waiting room or on a train or any situation where you've just got to sit around. He cannot do it if he doesn't have a book. Yeah, you know, I live alone, and that's that's a terrible trait that I have. I cannot sit and eat. And just eat without something occupying my attention. I have to read or I have to be like watching something on the computer. And if I go to a waiting room or anything like that or I'm on a plane, I'm the same. I have to have something to read. It drives me nuts. See, I can't read on transport because I get sick. It makes uh, me sick. It makes me nauseous. I get seasick. Sickness. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a habit of reading on a tra- a bus or a car. Oh, my God, no, I can't read. <laughs> no way. But my husband reads everywhere all the time. Oh, that's cool. Topic six, more moms. Now there's a couple that are kind of, that are not as nice. They can be positive or negative. Like for example, a helicopter parent. A helicopter parent, what's that? (laughs) So a helicopter parent is basically a parent that just hovers over their child all the time. They're always Uh worried about their child. (laughs) They they follow them everywhere. They want to know what they're doing at all times, and they just worry a lot. They're so worried. that sounds very stressful as a parent. They're always worried their child's going to get hurt or something, you know, or that they just are, are just overprotective, I guess. So are you a helicopter parent? Um, no, I don't think so. No, no. I'm very happy for my daughter to have independence. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So you don't, like, if she goes outside for a few minutes or if she's, you know, uh, you hear some clanging in the next room, you don't go rushing over? No, no. I, I wait for the, the tears <laughs> before I go over. <laughs> uh, smart, smart. 
And then recently, because of a very popular book, we have what's called The Tiger Mom. A Tiger Mom? Yeah, a Tiger Mom. Sounds cool. Is it a positive term? Or it is, is it kind name? of. It actually it comes, the tiger, I think, comes from the Asian reference. It's like a, for an Asian mother. Uh-huh. And it's basically really strict, really driven. Like, really uh-huh. push your kids. Make them study hard. Demand good grades. Demand uh-huh. that they do extracurricular activities. Really push them to have high-paying careers or successful careers. Uh-huh. Do well academically, stuff like that. From uh, from very young, does this? Is yeah, this from very young. The woman who the woman wrote a book. I think it's actually called Tiger Mom, and she was a Yale professor, and I think she was a, of Chinese ancestry, and she raised these very successful daughters. And so she wrote a book, and basically saying you need to be strict and push your kids and demand excellence. I think that's what she she wrote. <laughs> is the tiger? Is it reference to like the Chinese horoscope? Then maybe like the characteristics of the tiger for that year. No, actually, I just think it has to do with uh, being a tiger comes from Asia. I think oh, okay. That's, I think that's it. Well, a tiger does have a pretty kind of aggressive or driven sort of image. Like right. A t- when a tiger gets something in its sights, you know, like yeah, goes, yeah, right? totally. No, so, I'm not so much a tiger mom. No. So you're a soccer mom. More of a soccer mom, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's what I would want, a soccer mom. Soccer mom, yeah. Topic 7. Soccer moms. So, Juliet, now you are a parent. That's right. And, uh... Have you heard of all these terms that we have in the U.S. for different types of parents? I wonder if you have them in the U.K. You mean like soccer mom, stuff like that? Exactly. That's the only one I've heard of, actually. Okay, so what, what do you think a soccer mom is? What have you heard? My, my image is a mother who dedicates her time to running her kids to and from soccer practice, is that right? And also <laughs> right. drives a big vehicle. My image is like a big SUV or a big four-wheel drive. Right. I think it's also, it's like a parent that has many scheduled events for their child. Oh, okay. So, like, and maybe they have swim them. class, soccer practice, ballet, stuff like that. Oh, um, maybe I'm a little bit of a soccer mom. Yeah, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's actually, it's a good term. Like, it's, I think a soccer mom usually is consi- considered a, a caring parent. Okay. And they try to have their child do, like, productive things. Must be pretty, things. quite an affluent, perhaps middle class kind of parent. Yeah, exactly, like exactly. Now, we have the equivalent, and it's called a NASCAR dad. <laughs> is NASCAR some kind of car racing? Yeah, basically, it's just the, these cars, they run around and ride around in a circle. It's kind of like horse racing for cars. They just uh-huh. go around and around. Um, but, yeah, so I guess it's the same thing. It's just a dad who's really, you know, really into his kids, spends it's- a lot of time with his kids. Would this be a stay-at-home dad? like a? No, no. It's just kind of like a good old boy father, like a dad who's kind of blue-collar, um, not rich, you know, maybe, maybe lower, lower middle class maybe, but just kind of like your typical sitcom, TV sitcom dad, I guess. But that's nice. Takes his kids everywhere. That's nice. Yeah, like yeah. Involved in the... Yeah, like a NASCAR dad the... would probably take his son's hunting and maybe take his daughter shopping and stuff like that. Topic 8. Born to Run. Well, actually, speaking of extreme sports, we're talking about extreme sports. Have you heard about Ultra Marathon? I'm reading a book right now that's about a a tribe of ultra runners in Mexico, and I think it's going to come on to the subject of ultra marathons. Yeah, I mean, what, what does the book talk about? The book talks about this very old tribe who... can run for days like days days yeah and some of the members of this tribe are already in their 80s the 90s and they scale mountains and they have a very frugal diet they run barefoot barefoot they run barefoot in the desert in on the rocks desert. yeah yeah wow and they are bought like they run from well from they don't as soon as they learn to walk they they're running and they run their whole lives and they run like a hundred miles is is just like a walk in the park to them they just that's at, at insane speed, at speed at very high speeds 
Well, I mean, they, do they have some some secrets, some traditional secrets? Well, yeah, yeah, they they do. They're a very mystical tribe, and they're they're, they're not that well known. The, this, the book's written by a journalist who investigates, and he records his story of how he gets to meet. And just even finding them and meeting them is a huge ordeal in itself. Because I mean, physiologically, it sounds it's, like that's impossible. Like the human body can only run so far because it needs water, it needs food, it needs well, rest. I don't know. I think the part of the philosophy of the book is that we're limited by our belief in that and that in fact this tribe don't have that belief therefore they don't have those limits they kind of surpass those limits simply by they just do it nobody told them they couldn't so they they just did nobody it told them they needed a pair of you know hundred dollar shoes in order to run they they just they just it's, it's like it's a natural human thing and it's like an atavistic thing wow you know, humans, we can run down gazelle. We can run faster than horse. I mean, we can run further than horses and these cre creatures that we think have. An, Are a you sure ability. about that? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I yeah. I've never heard that before. That's that why you know people who it's quite dangerous to run with your, with a dog, for example. People who run and take the dogs because dogs can't run as far as humans. Really? Yeah, and dogs can't sweat. Humans can run and run and run for days. That's how they. That's how they killed prey when we were. In the cave, <laughs> they just you, never gave up. They, no, then you can you can outrun an antelope because antelope uh, can only have short, sharp bursts of speed. Uh, but a pack of humans can run down any animal on the planet. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. If I ever need to uh, <laughs> kill an antelope, well, yeah, obviously you can't just, you know <laughs> stick your shoes on and set off and. <laughs> wow. Good stuff, though. So, but would you like to try it someday? Try one of these ultra marathons. I think it's good to have a goal, but I, um, I, I like training for these kind of things. An ultramarathon, I don't. I just mentally, I don't know. I have that that ability to run for that far, and that long. I'd like to have. Yeah, yeah. I'd like, yeah. I'd like to try and develop that stamina. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe, maybe in my younger days, but uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> or think another life, but I I'm going to pass. I think that that running actually that requires a lot of maturity. So the older you get, the better you are at running because. You give up on stuff when you're young and your brain's quite, you know, you can't concentrate. You learn concentration and discipline and they come with age and maturity. So I think we get better runners as we get older. That's what I'm banking on anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I got that on my side. <laughs> Topic nine, alternative exercise. Hey, Julia. Hey, Todd. How are you doing? Good, good. Now, Julia, um, you are really fit, and also you are a yoga instructor uh -huh. and a runner. Uh -huh. So you are the perfect person to talk about um, extreme exercise. Extreme. I wouldn't say I'm an extremist, but go on. <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, I thought I would ask about this yoga that you do in like really hot rooms. Or something oh, like that. Oh yeah, the big Bikram yoga. It's yeah. called. Yeah. I, actually, I never tried it myself. Um, I know it's kind of a growing craze. Maybe uh, Madonna brought, made it really popular. Uh huh. Um, as far as I know, you do it in a sauna, but it can't possibly be a sauna. <laughs> like <laughs> not a real sauna, so I, right? Yeah, I don't know what the temperature is, but I, I think the philosophy behind it is to try to recreate. The same climate as you'd find in India, where yoga originates. Oh, from. right, right. So you want it to be really hot, hot or and humid, yeah. Oh, wow. And also, people who like to get the kind of the the stretch value, but also like to sweat at yeah. the same time. If you want to sweat at yoga, then yeah, to crank up the temperature is going to help you. Wow, that's sweat. intense. Well, yeah, what about? So have you heard about CrossFit? CrossFit? Yeah, no. CrossFit's the big rage in America. CrossFit? No, no, I haven't heard of that. CrossFit is like people do all of these really old school exercises like push-ups or pull-ups. Star jumps. Um, they do like jumping jacks. They do really weird things like deadlifts, stuff like that. Um, but they do it one after the other in really short time intervals. Uh -huh. And like you're supposed to, like the workout only takes 12 minutes. Whoa. But if you do it right, I think you yeah. Like some people actually get so fatigued they throw up. <laughs> so like you really push your body to the limit. <laughs> well, that is extreme. <laughs> it yeah. is extreme. Although I'm probably saying it loss. wrong. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, but it's actually this is a big craze where people do more natural body movements, and you never do the same thing twice. You're not supposed to get into a routine. You always do things you different, do it like spontaneously, or you set yourself a program. I think you... that well, there's a whole website. You can go to the CrossFit website and they CrossFit. explain it all. Yeah, but it looks pretty cool. It's like not your typical gym type workout. Oh, CrossFit sounds like something you do on a BMX or something. Like <laughs> right, right, exactly. Topic 10, Character Changes. What about your personality or your characteristics? Um, I would like to be more studious uh, for school because I am I'm not that much of a yeah, stay-home-all-night-to-study person. I look at my textbook and I really try, but then I realize I could be doing something else. So I just go out and do something else and I don't do my homework and I I don't fail because I am at least smart enough to pass <laughs> but sometimes it's it's a struggle to get through um so yeah I would like to be more studious and more maybe hesitant in my answers because I talk before I think at some point uh, and sometimes um I do like my my open personality though like being like, for example, when we went out partying yesterday, I was talking to everybody, which was very nice. And people seem to like that open attitude as long as you're not being open and arrogant, because mm -hmm. I try not to. Yeah. Uh, if you're being open and and in, open because you're interested in the person you're talking to, then you get more positive resp responses. Yeah. So I do like that. But being so open has caused you problems as well. I remember that guy thought that you liked him. <laughs> Because you were so yeah, so nice to him. Happen. <laughs> I can't I can't help it. There was a a guy in my school, a, I don't know, a guy. He's probably in his forties, who went over and asked, and talked to me. And I I it's just impossible for me to say go away. So I ended up giving him my phone number, and now he calls me every night half past twelve on my phone, which is very loud and very annoying. Every night. And he when I pick up is well he he stopped now because I don't pick up anymore. But in the beginning, he just, I pick up the phone and he said, hi. And then I said, what do you want? And then he said, nothing much. How are you? <laughs> like, really? He didn't even want anything. He just wanted to talk to me. And yeah, that kind of problems happens <laughs> more than often because mm. I can't help it. What would you like to change about your status, like a new house, a job, uh, boyfriend, anything like that? I would not mind finding a nice guy. I would not at all. I don't know about the specifics, and I am not even sure I can handle a relationship right now. Maybe I just want to meet somebody to try and work it out with. Work it out with. But that's probably mo the most important thing, because I love where I live. I love my, my study. I don't have a job, and that's really nice. <laughs> I do have... I saved up money before traveling. So I do have a lot of money right now. So I don't need to work. And that's nice. At the moment. At the moment. Topic 11. Changes in appearance. So, Maria, uh, I thought we'd just talk about things like, uh, what would you like to change about yourself? Mm -hmm. So what would you like to change about your appearance? Well, I don't like the f like I don't like to think about changing myself. I like how people look from the birth, if you can say that. Um, but if I should choose, I would like to change my height because I'm very tall, and it does like cause a problem when I'm looking for a guy. It's especially since in the past I happened to fall for shorter guys, and I got issues because. They were always being intimidated by my height, even especially when I wore heel heels. Um, so I would like to be like have my body because I do like my long legs, but just be shorter and not be <sighs> taller than everybody yeah. <laughs> as I am at the moment. And All I, of my friends. <laughs> I guess that would also lead to you having problems finding shoes and clothes and oh, stuff indeed. like that. Yes, I have. 
to watch out. Well, in in my country, it's uh, it's not a problem to find shoe sizes because we are very tall people normally. Um, so shoes are big and clothes are big. But when I travel, I went to ch- to China to um, to try to like visit a friend, and I wanted to go shopping, and it's impossible to find shoes and long long pants and fitting bras too, <laughs> if you can imagine. So that w- I would I would like to change my height, but th- otherwise I I can I might change like my weight, for example, or I have changed my hair color several times. I went from black to no, blonde to black to red to blonde. So <laughs> otherwise, I think I'm fine with me. Topic 12, makeup. Uh, are you happy about it? Oh, now, like um, looking back, are you glad she did? It was that? it was tough love. <laughs> at the time, I hated her and I was getting picked on a lot at school about it because mm. I just didn't realize that, you know, as a female, you, you have to do these certain things. It's like, this is what's acceptable in the community. You have to do this. So it's like, I didn't realize it because I always played with the boys mm. and none of them did this crap. <laughs> it's like, why do we have to worry about that? It sounds so, really kind of old fashioned, doesn't it? Yeah, um, but I was actually, you know, now thinking about it, I'm happy that she did because, you know, it, it it brought it home to me that, that to a certain degree you do have to at least, you know, live with what your community, you know, accepts as standards. Like if you walk outside, you know, the community accepts that you have to, you know, wear a shirt when you go outside. You can't go out topless. You, mm. you probably should wear the shirt <laughs> or you'll get looked at funny. So if I don't want my daughter to wear makeup, I should actually buy her some makeup and force her to wear it. <laughs> so, so she'll do the exact opposite. Well, I, I have heard that uh, children do tend to do exactly what their parents tell them not to do. Um, I I just, I don't know. Um, I didn't want to wear makeup, so my mom was concerned. Um I know a lot of people, though, who have had the opposite problem, like when they're younger, like they're maybe seven or, or eight, and they want to wear makeup because mommy does. Mm. And, you know, I, I had a lot of friends who would play dress up. They would sneak into mom's closet, steal all their, you know, her dresses and her high heels and steal all her makeup and, you know, play dress up. And mm. it, at a certain age, it was cute. But um, my cousin actually uh, was one of them, and she would wear makeup. She was to school, um, and she was only an elementary schooler. Wow, so, uh, that's pretty young. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, anger about that from the teachers, and uh, it was not at all acceptable. <laughs> so I don't really know when the correct age is to wear makeup, but. Um, I think uh, at least if they're uh, more mature or more adult-like, uh, I guess maybe it's all right. Once they become, they're no longer little girls anymore, then maybe they can let them wear makeup if they want. Mm. But, oh, yeah. cheers. Thank, thanks for the advice, and <laughs> I'll use it wisely. <laughs> You're welcome.